What's up, guys? Brett Okamoto from ESPN, joined by Ali Abdelaziz, who I wanted to speak to this week, um, regardless of what happened at UFC 280. I was, uh, we were in contact last week. Obviously, it was a big week for a lot of your guys. And um, so here we are following up on, on everything that happened at UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi. And the first thing I want to ask you, Ali, is, uh, you know, obviously, Habib and Islam, they were asked about uh, the completion of Father's Plan. And I know that you were very close to Abdulmanap as well. What was it like for you to be you know, watching that event and to see it, um, you know, come to fruition, what uh, Abdul Manap had planned for all those years. You know, um, it, it was it, it was an emotional moment for me because I know it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a triangle, you know, Habib, his father, myself, his mom, like we all connected and we all, we know what was the plan. Habib will become a champion. He passed the baton to Islam. And this is kind of what Habib's father wanted me. And if everybody knew him, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And, uh, and without him, Dagestan will, was not, we will not have this many great fighters in, uh, uh, in Dagestan. He made a revolution in, in, in martial arts in Dagestan. And, uh, and I think everybody in Dagestan, all up to him. And now Habib is uh, uh, you know, picking up uh, the baton. And I don't know how long he's going to do it for. Uh, but he said, you know, he's going to help all his friends who brought him. To become a champion and and here you go one one champion uh last weekend islam Mahachev, uh master for performance uh you, you know and i i told everybody that i said listen charles is good but it's level to this i think islam is gonna play with it you know and i've been telling you guys for years about islam and everybody's you know, say they they interviewed 77 ufc fighters Seven UFC fighters said Islam will lose, you know. Mm-hmm. Some of them even was knocked out by Dagestan guys, and they say Dagestan style is boring. It's, 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 they, they wrestle, they, they this, but, you know, I think most of this, this fighter who's interviewed and picked up against Islam, they just fear anybody uh, <laughs> have any word stand, like Tajikistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Mm-hmm. It's just fear. For me, it's fear. But they, they understand skills. You know, they understand skills. And uh, it's okay. It's free country. They can do whatever they want. But uh, they all eat their word. And uh, it's all good. We'll move on. Well, listen, I, obviously, he looks great. You, you did call it. You said that he would dominate. He, he did look dominant in that fight. And then they bring Volkanovsky into the octagon. And it would appear that it's going to be Alexander Volkanovsky versus Islam Makachev. Uh, that seems very obvious to everybody watching. Is that is that what's going to happen? I mean, I, I think the whole world is expecting that fight in Perth in, in February. Listen, the, the UFC is always making, try to make a dollar, you know, like all these fighters try to make a dollar, right? Um, but also, you know, if you talk about Malnowski, okay, no problem. He's the pound for pound king, but what about Benil? He won eight fights in a row, finished five of his, of his last eight, Third most win in lightweight history, 16 wins, you know, fight up, fought down, fought everybody he asked you to. Of course, Islam want to be the power pound king, but Benir want to get his shot. And at the end of the day, like I said, you know, I have Henry fought Marlon, I didn't stop it. I have uh, Kamara fought Gilbert, I didn't stop it. I have uh, uh, Habib fought Justin, I didn't stop it. And, and, and when you come, to Habib, nobody's closer to me in this, you know, as, as a brother like Habib, you know, of course, Kamaru is, is one of my best friends and all these guys, you know, but when you come to Habib, there's nobody closer, you know, than Habib, you know, but I didn't stop it. And it's not gonna, me, gonna stop Benil from fighting Islam. At the end of the day, like, listen, the UFC think dollar sign. This is a business, they have to make money, but also, you know, you know what's crazy? Uh, you know, these guys, Islam, Habib, all these guys. If I say to them, hey, you know, hey, you need to fight. Malnowski is the best fight. They're not going to respect me. They think I'm a traitor, you know. And I say, I say, hey, to Habib, Benil deserve it, you know. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, I agree with you. You understand? But in a way, I have as a, as a, as a, as a, as a Muslim man or as a man in general, mm-hmm. I can uh, pick side at one point. You know, I love Islam. Islam for me is like a son. You know, like he sleep in my house. But Benil too, I know Benil been with me like a brother to me too. Doesn't matter if we're different religion, different faith. But of course, but even me being Muslim, 
I have to be fair because this is a business. For me, it's business too. They, they are in business together, right? Yeah. It's a lot of things involved. And uh, I think Baneer uh, deserve it more than anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Balnowski, I respect the guy so much. He's uh, he's such a, an amazing uh, like ambassador to the sport. And, uh, but if you want to ruin his legacy, go ahead and fight Islam. <laughs> you know, if you want to ruin his legacy, go ahead. Go ahead, you know. You know, like uh, I respect him. I can't talk trash about him because I like him. I like his coach always with him. Such a nice people. But how he gonna beat Islam? He cannot beat Islam. He cannot beat Benil either. I don't think so. But uh, like he's gonna, like Habib said, Habib doesn't say things to say. So if you wanna ruin your legacy, you wanna ruin your spot, go ahead and fight Islam. You're gonna get finished in two rounds. And I think Benil will knock him out. I do. I really do. I think it's too small for this division, but he's he's a man though. He's a man, and, and, and uh, he just uh, he doesn't have enough grappling or wrestling to defend Islam. Yeah. You know he doesn't, and and I think like Habib said, he eat a lot of knees too, but I just don't think he deserve it over Benil. I just me personally, of course, it's great for Islam. You know, if you Islam, you wanna smash this guy and after the fight with Benin. I right. get it. I understand too because you want to be the pound for pound number one. Yeah. It's not going to give you any more money. It's just a status. But nobody on this planet cannot tell me because Islam been in the same position. Habib been in the same position. They all been there. They deserve it. Somebody else jumped in. Now Benin did. Right? But also they have to do what's the best for them. But what I'm going to do make the case for Benil. Mm -hmm. And you already know the UFC is going to do what they need to do to make money, you know? But of course, it's, it's better for Benil to fight Islam because for the title, but it's better for Islam to fight Ranowski because he's the pound for pound king. I get both sides, but nobody, nobody can tell me Benil that deserves this. Well, I think, um, yeah, it, it, you're, you're in a uh, potentially awkward spot because what's best I'm, for no, I'm not. No, 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 oh, I'm not. I've been there. A, it's, I know, and you, you have been there, and, and, it's, and it, you, navi you navigate it. Uh, you, you have navigated it before, but like what's best for Islam is probably Volkanovsky. He wants the pound for pound. What's best for Benil is the title shot. What is working in your favor, what I think makes it easier, is that I think even Benil recognizes that like, hey, if they make Alexander Volkanovsky in Australia, they have a pay-per-view event in Australia. It's it's pound for pound number one versus pound for pound number three. Benil is like, he's not be. That's just what's great about Benil. He's like, I'll, I'll face the next guy. But Do you want? I him don't agree with it. I, I don't agree with it. I, I I can tell you right now. Like I told this to, to Sean. I already know what's gonna happen. They're gonna try to offer Islam to, to fight Benil in in Australia, and they're gonna try to make Oliveira fight. Benil in Brazil, and and it's, you know this promotion one on one, they're already they're already gonna try to do that, and it doesn't help me when Benil go out there and say I'll fight anybody. I don't I know. know it. Make my job a little bit harder, and I was like, hey, please shut up, you know. But you know, Benil is just a special guy, you know. But I also give my word to Rafael Cordero, he he should be next, you know. And I also I keep my man as a word. But listen, this UFC. Islam deserved a title shot way before because none of these guys wanted to fight him. Let's be real. Everybody duck Islam. Chandler duck Islam. Poirier duck Islam. All the, I don't, you know, I don't want to mention some of my friends who ducked him, but they, you know who they are? They ducked Islam. You understand? Paul Felder duck Islam. And I love Paul. All of them duck Islam. Charles Oliveira duck Islam. Even they duck Benil too. Poirier is supposed to fight with Benil, gonna offer a fight. Mm -hmm. They duck him. Chandler, this guy is zero. He's a zero, man. He's a zero. He's like, talk about like, hey, shut up. Like, relax. Enjoy yourself. You know, he almost 50 years old. You know, he looks good. He looks like a business model, but you're not even in a conversation. He's not even in any conversation, you know? Like, um, but also, Benil and Islam like easy money. Any of these guys can fight and they, they're gonna get it. If the UFC goes the route of Islam versus Volkov, though, 
do you will you tell Benil to wait? Would you like him to wait? Do you think he should wait? What what, what do you think is going to happen with him if they do make that fight? Listen, I'm not a favorite a f- fighter waiting, no. but I gotta talk to my brother Rafael Cordero. Like he's my friend, and uh, and, and, and he, he always give wise advice. But I'm not in a favorite fighter wait because what happened is an injury. What happened is a close fight, is a rematch. What mm-hmm. happened if it's accidental? I don't, of course, I never told fighter to wait because you can buy everything in life. You cannot buy time back, you know? But also, you know, I, I just, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, Alexander Volnowski, if they make this fight, he's going to hurt his legacy because he's not going to survive mm-hmm. two round, three mm-hmm. round match. Not because he's, he's a great, he's a pound for pound number one right now today. I can tell you this. It, maybe, maybe, because I think Islam, if they fight, Islam is going to stop him. You know, Islam will stop him. You know, uh, but I just think it's going to hurt his legs. It's a free roll. You get a title shot. You, if you lose, you go back to your championship, but nobody going to view him. He's the baddest guy in the, in, in the planet. You know, I, I, if I was his manager or I mean, his people, I will not take this risk because he, he's going to go down, down to history as the greatest featherweight all the time. He is. I don't care what everybody said. But mm-hmm. if he lose the way I think he will lose, it's going to hurt him, my opinion. If that fight comes together, Volkanovski is like a minus 330 favorite. That's it should, no, brother, this, are they, this odd maker are stupid. This should be minus 900. Easy. Mm-hmm. Should have minus 900. You know? And, but, Brother, I cannot say nothing about Alexander Volnowski as a person, as a fighter. He's one of the greats, all the time. How about Bilal, Ali? What are you going to do with Bilal? Because I talked to Bilal, you know, and they're they're saying Hamzat and Colby, that's a fight that they want to put together. Obviously, Kamaru and Leon, they need to do a trilogy. Where does that leave Bilal? He's another guy who's won eight in a row. What what happens with Bilal? Uh, Listen to me. Listen. Bilal got his first knockout in the UFC. Bonus. Put some respect on his name. Put some respect on his name. Bilal, one of the nicest dude, gangster as hell, funny as hell. Mm-hmm. You can get, he's a chameleon, man. And you know, you go out there, Sean Brady, I have the most respect to his tough, durable, undefeated, mm-hmm. young prospect. And you go out there and you go ahead and knock him out like that. You know, you know, Sean Shelby, one of the most brutally honest people on the planet. And he's like, wow. I can't believe this amazing child. You know, have you really pushed him? You know, but it, it was in him. He just needed this little push. But allow can finish people. You know, listen, if you don't give Balal title shot, Kobe Covington have not beat anybody coming off a win in a long time. Kobe Covington is irrelevant. You know, UFC need a big fight before Hamza to make sure he make weight and all that. I understand Kobe Covington, this guy is going to be the drama, is going to be the, you know, the older stuff. And I think Hamza is a tough, uh, Balal is a much tougher fight, a five round fight, you know, uh, than, than Kobe. Uh, and I think he need to fight number one contender match uh, or a title fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, he's a guy have nine fight winning streak now or eight. You know what I'm saying? Nobody had that. You know, uh, you know, when it come down to Kobe or Hamza, every all of them, you know, that maybe their bigger star, I I recognize it, but all of them have what three Walter Witt fight? Like you know, Kobe, he lost, like he's one and two in his last three. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like how are you gonna? And Kobe, even when Kamaru beat him, he hoped Kamaru fought and he fought him again. He fought him off a loss. You understand? Mm-hmm. Um, or, or it's just um, or maybe beat Woodley or something like that. Woodley was dead already, you know. Uh, he's just beating guys who are really dead. Masvidal was dead, you know. Like Masvidal was never going to be the same after Kamara fight. Like, I don't care. Like not nothing personal against him or anybody in his team. He's just never going to be the same. He's done. Like I think when you get knocked out like this, you are done. You know, it, it's just because it wasn't just knocked out. You getting pieced up in the first fight. You getting pieced up in the second fight. Mentally, you know, you checked out. And after that, what he went through is Kobe. Kobe dominated him belt to belt too. You understand? You know, 
uh, and, and honestly, like I thought he was fighting Gilbert Byrne. That's the other situation I need to figure out with the UFC. But <clears throat> they said December, now January. I just don't think Masvidal is going to fight Gilbert. Well, that was going to be that was going to be the next guy I brought up. I, uh, is he going to take that fight? What, what is brother? We was we was told December. Now we're saying, oh, he wanted to go to, maybe to Brazil. I, I don't know. Like I must be like, why the hell I go to Brazil? But maybe like listen, he went to Darren Tilt and England knocked him out. Maybe he fight good outside. So uh, listen, at the end of the day, I'm this is my last week. I'm not waiting anymore for Gilbert because Gilbert need to fight somebody. I think Gilbert needs to fight Kobe, comes out, needs to fight Bilal. This is my opinion. I'm not the UFC. I'm not the matchmaker. Or, you know, I don't want to see Bilal and Gilbert fight now. But if they have to fight, they're going to have to fight. You understand? But I don't think Gilbert should be waiting around like that. Yeah. You know, I think Gilbert now star power. Last two fights become bigger. And I think he's holding his own ground. And I think he needs to fight. Have you, you know, told, have you told the UFC like I need to know about Masvidal by this date, otherwise we're moving on? Like, have it like do you have like a time frame? I just I don't believe this. Listen, I don't believe this. One guy in the UFC said I got, it. and I believe him because mm. always come through. You mm. understand? Mm. But me, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, like it, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. They they gotta do what they gotta do. Nobody should be forced to fight anybody. You know, and it is what it is. But if Masvidal wanted, he can come and get it. You know, he's a tough fighter, but I just think Gilbert gonna run through him. I, I, I respectfully, very respectfully, I think Gilbert will run through Masvidal. I hope that fight happens. I love that fight, Gilbert versus uh, Jorge. Listen, it, 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 when you really look at this, if Larry Edward win again and and Masvidal win win beat Gilbert, one of the biggest fights in UFC. Like Masvidal wins, wins, you know? It's not like just only for Gilbert. It's good for him too because he's number 11 or number 10. Like sure. Gilbert, Gilbert gave him an opportunity. And and you know what? And, and he's giving Gilbert an opportunity too because he's he's a star. You know, Masvidal is a big name. And I can't take this away from him, but I think whatever he wants, whatever they want. I don't, I don't control nothing. They control this. Well, Gil Gilbert is like, he really wants that fight to be five rounds. D is, have you guys talked about that at all? Is there a possibility of uh, five rounds? It, it can be five rounds. It can be it can be in the elevator. It can be three rounds, two rounds. doesn't matter. Gilbert is going to whoop him. I think Gilbert will smash him. But, you know, that's what I think. But, you know, he thinks he's going to smash Gilbert too. You know, his team going to think they're going to smash Gilbert too. I'm riding with my guy because I believe in my guy and I'm sure he's training and he's doing good, but I just don't think he will fight Gilbert. Yeah. First. Yeah. I guess if, we'll he find did, out. if he is, I'm wrong. And I've been wrong many times. <laughs> hey, one other guy I want to ask you about, um, and maybe, maybe you, you will have something on and maybe you won't. Um, it's been almost exactly one year since Rumble Johnson was supposed to fight Vadim Nemkov. Is there anything you can tell us about Rumble Johnson? Rumble's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's going through some health problem right now. And, and it's very sad. And, uh, and, uh, and I think I want everybody to pray for him. You know, pray for Anthony. He's not doing well. He's very strong spiritually. But uh, pray for him. Pray for him. And, uh, and uh, I want to give a shout out to Bellator, Scott Coker, Mike Hogan. They've been supporting him. You could not imagine how much support they've given him. And they didn't really have to. And, uh, and, I, I, and uh, they've been great. And, uh, and I'll, Anthony, be strong. You know, be strong. A lot of people love you. And, uh, and, uh, and he's going to be okay. But he's not doing well right now. I hate to hear that, man. Um, so best, uh, obviously give my best to Anthony. And, and I know the sport will be thinking about him. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Ali, I think that's it. I, that's all I got for you now. I think we'll You're not going to talk about Henry Cejudo. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you're not going to talk about Henry Triple C. It's <laughs> How in the world? world yeah, how in the world did I forget that? Okay, Henry Cejudo. Yes, Aljamain Sterling. Is that what's next? It seems like listen, all of the signs are pointing to that's what's next. Is, is that the fight we're getting? Like, listen, Dana is one of the greatest promoters we've ever seen in life. Dana just don't say things to say things, right? Yeah. He doesn't just drop, you know, Henry's name. I think uh, this is the fight to make. Henry. 
people say T.J. Dillashaw and Dominic Cruz is the greatest bantamweight of all the time. How the hell do you say that? How are they going to be the, the greatest bantamweight of all the time? They got knocked out by, by, by one guy. Henry mm-hmm. Owen knocked uh, T.J. out, you know, and At he knocked way. out. At that way. Doesn't matter. When you get knocked out by a smaller guy, you do not say you're the greatest of anything. You yeah. just sit down and take a seat. Dominic Cruz is like, he knocked him out. He got knocked out again by Chiro Vera. Like, like, you cannot say that. You know, the, the sport is evolving. And Henry Sol is the greatest combat athlete we've ever seen. Arguably, it was Kelly Harris, and they both are. You know, and right now, it's like, listen, Aljamain and Stalin need to be, you know, he, he, in big fights. Henry Saud is a big, big fight for him, right? It's a big challenge, you know. Stalictly on paper, I like Aljamain a lot. I, he, I consider him a friend, you know. But in reality, this is business, you know. This is the fight business. He's going to have his hand full with Henry. And and I see some things, you know, maybe he say he deserves it. Who doesn't, if, if Henry Saud doesn't deserve a title shot, who does? He never lost his title at 25 or 35. Yeah. He didn't hail the division. He didn't, you know, sit back and watch everybody. He, said, he was honorable, right? And now he said he's coming back, you know, you know, everything financially, everything is good. Everything is good on our end. <clears throat> um, they just, you know, <clears throat> Sean, Sean and Dana and these guys, <clears throat> they have to pull the trigger. But Henry's 100% in. He weighed 153 pounds today. He's 17 pounds from making weight, or 18, like 18 pounds, you know. Listen, uh, Aljamain is going to have his hands full. And I don't think Aljamain get the respect he deserves. I think Aljamain is really good. Very, very good. But who, the guys who've been fighting, none of them have good wrestling. None of them are really a complete fighter. And I think Henry is going to test Aljamain to the limit. You know, the UFC still needs to make a decision on that, or the decision has basically already been made that it is going to happen. Like, this is the fight that they're putting together. Listen, like I said, Dana White doesn't just talk to talk. Like, mm-hmm. Dana White is one of the, is the greatest promoters of all the time because he tests the water. You know, you know, three months ago, I sat with the UFC, we had dinner, and we say we want to come back. And they said, okay. Mm-hmm. And this is the fight to make. You understand? And make all the sense of the world. Stylistically, is a great fight. Henry's going to promote this fight. Listen, Aljamain, you know, Henry's going to make you money, man. He's going to promote the hell out of this fight. Of course, he would prefer to fight John O'Malley, but John O'Malley maybe need a little bit of rest, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, <clears throat> I think John O'Malley, right after that, deserves a title shot too, because people need to put some respect on his name also. I think he, he did very well, you know? Close fight, but that's the game, you know, we can win them all. Sometimes the judges, some, sometimes, but Henry Soto will be back. He will fight. Um, I don't believe anything is done to our sign about agreement, mm-hmm. sign about agreement. Mm-hmm. I have not signed about agreement. I have not get the contract. I think everybody being respectful towards Aljamain, he need to enjoy his time with his family. Mm-hmm. But when Aljamain come back, he's gonna have triple C waiting for him. And I truly believe uh, if anybody at the moment would destroy, destroy Aljamain, beat Aljamain, I think Henderson Hill will beat him. I really do. Stylistically, it's a nightmare matchup for him. Uh, it's a tough fight for both guys. But I think how Aljamain can beat him, can, cannot take him down. He cannot strike with him. I think, uh, I think Henry will, will not easily, I think Henry will win. But also Henry been out for two years. Yeah. We're gonna get the new Henry or something different, right? Yeah. But Henry is a perfectionist and a professional, yeah. you know. And Henry put the work. Um, and I just can't wait. You know, it's gonna be a great fight for the Pentamweight division. But I'm just telling you this today. Like I told you about Islam for years. Mm-hmm. Nobody in the top 15 is gonna to touch Omar's feet. Nobody cannot to touch him. He's the great, he's the best pentamweight on the planet today. Uh, and I manage a lot of them. And the top 15, Omar will beat anybody. Will beat anybody. And I really what is what's what? next for you? Brother, he's he going through what Islam going through. Nobody wanna fight Omar. You know, mm-hmm. nobody wanna fight these guys. 
you know, he's, he's going to have to, Sean Shelby's going to, you know, put his foot down and do what he does the best because he's, he's the best, right? Mm. You know, Omri have a little bit of injury. He's good. He's good to go to January, but none of these guys want to fight with him. But I'm just telling you that I promise you, I'm not exaggerating. He will be a UFC champion if this get an opportunity. Nobody can beat him. Nobody can beat him. Have him fight Yan, have him fight Al Jamein, Omadi. He will smash all these guys. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And everybody afraid of Omar in the Bantamweight division, all of them. And if anybody, they say I'm wrong, you only have to do one thing, fight Omar. But I guarantee you, nobody's going to pick up the phone and fight Omar. I promise you this. He's a terror. He beat everybody in the gym, 135, 145, 155. Nobody going to stop him. I'm telling you, nobody going to stop him. And his brother, Osman, November 19, Bellator no. in Chicago, fighting for the lightweight title. Khabib's going to dominate the lightweight and Bellator and the UFC worldwide. And also my brother, Corey Anderson, rematch with uh, v- uh, Nadim Vinkov for the Bellator light heavyweight title. You know, and it's, it's going to be, can you imagine Habib have lightweight and UFC and lightweight and Bellator? And it's going to happen because Omar is 24 years old. I think Omar has the potential to be better than Islam and Habib. I really do. Islam. I think he's more com- I think he's more complete than all of them. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.